So if you've ever been confused about some artistic, uh, if you've ever been confused on the show about some artistic technique terms that we use, I'll give you some examples now. American traditional tattoo style is thick black lines because it was only thick needles that were available at the time. It's a moment in history. I don't think going into it, tattooers were thinking like, we're gonna develop this style. As artists were creating their own pigment, they were inventing American traditional colors. And the classic imagery was because so many of those tattoos were being done on sailors. They literally created it. Neo's a new way of doing something. So like you have neo-traditional, which is a new take on traditional tattoos. You have neo-Japanese, which is a new take on traditional Japanese. Black and gray tattoos are the absence of color. It's just any tattoo done in black and gray. Black and gray realism would be like portraiture, the more realistic side of it, no outline, or illustrative black and gray is a piece of art that you draw, it could be a character or a design. Realism, there's two different ways I explain realism. There's photorealism and then there's natural realism. So a photorealist artist only thinks about copying a photo. A realism artist is somebody that takes the image of a photo but studies life in order to bring life into the photo. Watercolor tattoos are a watery pigment that flows. It's sheer color that pools in certain areas. Lots of watercolor techniques are supposed to look imperfect or splattered or very painterly. My problem with watercolor tattoos is so many people use it as a cop-out. Like, nah, that doesn't have to be saturated all the way. Nah, it could be messy. I'm just gonna throw some black lines in and put color over it. It's watercolor. I don't like when watercolor tattoos are used as a cop-out like that. Biomechanical generally forms the shape of the person's body using a lot of textures and organic things that are shapely and could look like bark or people even put like metal or gears in there. It's almost turning someone's body into nature. Geometric tattooing is usually like shapes, it's usually lines. It's either negative skin on positive dot work, very clean. I think of just black, white, three-dimensional, but very simple. Geometric tattooing squares and shapes and triangles and creating an image that's nearly abstract, the kind of stuff you see in nature, like, you know, the tree of life and geometric patterns. It's a completely different style. Traditional Japanese, the Japanese culture has a lot of rules in tattooing. Backgrounds of tattoos are always done in black and gray and the foregrounds in color. I mean, you can have a whole black and gray Japanese tattoo. They, they do that also, but you're not gonna do like blue water. People will be like, hey, I want blue water and it's not untraditional. It's taking it back to the traditions of the Japanese tattooers. So, I mean, you could do whole sleeves of just of wind and or water. There's a lot that goes into Japanese tattooing, but also keeping it very simple at the same time. A blowout goes into that tissue, that fatty tissue underneath the skin, and it spreads like a bruise. I just did one recently, it sucked. You know when you get some food coloring and you drop it into a cup of water? That's what happens to ink under the skin when it goes in too deep. New school is cartoony, they weren't traditional, but they were definitely a cartoonist rendering of a tattoo. So it had an outline, some shading, depending on how far you wanted to take it. From there, New School became illustrative. Now they have illustrative New School, and then it's went from there. After care is, so the tattooing process doesn't end when time is up and machines are down. The tattoo process actually goes for a while after that because after you leave the studio, it's up to you to take care of that beautiful piece of art. So everything you do once you leave the studio is considered aftercare.